All right, so I'm sure that by this point, most of you guys are aware of some of the absolutely crazy shit that has been going on with Kanye West over the last couple of days. And originally, I wasn't really planning on covering this because I don't really think that it's newsworthy that, you know, this guy who very clearly is struggling with uh, very serious mental health issues, covering just like a mental health breakdown that he's having in public is uh, not really newsworthy. But then we had a bunch of right-wing reactionary propagandists like Tucker Carlson and Candace Owens and Ben Shapiro jumping in on this Action. So I figured, okay, we got to go through this. We got to do a little rundown on what exactly has been happening. And I'm going to show you um, some of the responses that we have gotten uh, from this, from a lot of these right-wing propagandists. So here, just to start us off on this sort of like timeline of events. Originally, the main controversy started when Kanye West made an appearance with Candace Owens at this Paris fashion show where they were both rocking White Lives Matter uh, t-shirts or jackets or whatever they had on, right? Flaunting White Lives Matter as a label. Now, some people initially like looked at this and they were like, oh, he's being ironic. He's not wearing this in a serious way. I think just the fact that he was there with Candace Owens kind of says the opposite of that. Candace Owens, a uh, well-known right-wing black commentator who espouses white supremacist talking points on a regular basis. Uh, the fact that he is like buddy-buddy with her, I think gives an indication in terms of uh, how ironic he was actually being with rocking this. So you had this aspect of it, which was in and of itself, I think, pretty worthy of criticism to some extent. Then you had uh, an appearance that he made with Tucker Carlson, another white nationalist propagandist over on Fox News, one of the most watched uh, uh, most watched commentators in the entire country. And um, he did this interview where Tucker Carlson was very aggressively trying to portray Kanye West, who has been openly praising Trump recently and coming out with a lot of these right wing talking points about the black community and a bunch of other things. And um, he basically did this interview where he was trying to do a uh, sort of a fluff piece for Kanye and to make him seem a lot less uh, uh, unstable and um, delusional than he actually is in real life. And as a part of that interview, they cut out a lot of really insane clips that were uh, said by Kanye throughout this. So here from Rolling Stone, they say Fox News edited a lot of anti-Semitism out of Kanye's Tucker Carlson interview in leaked videos. So I'm going to show you just one clip to give you a little bit of a perspective in terms of some of the stuff that they were editing out from this interview. So let's go ahead and jump into this first one. I was biting my tongue on my political political opinion because I thought it would be better for my children. And now you look up and my kids are going to a school that teaches black kids a complicated Kwanzaa. I prefer my kids knew Hanukkah than Kwanzaa. At least it will come with some financial engineering. <laughs> Kwanzaa doesn't, you know, so they don't teach even Christmas itself. Christ mass I was biting my. Okay. <laughs> All right, so, I mean, I don't even know what the fuck he's talking about here. His kids are going to a school that's teaching them Kwanzaa. I mean, you understand that there are, like, secular educations that are available for your kids, or, you know, you don't have to get a religious education inherently, but then he just insists on tacking on that brazenly anti-Semitic trope of saying that, well, if my kids were learning about Hanukkah instead of learning about Kwanzaa, then they would basically be, what, financial experts because Jewish people are good with money or something like that? I mean, just, like, bizarre anti-Semitism. I'm not really sure what's gotten into Kanye's head recently or why he's been so obsessed with Jewish people, but we're going to get to a couple more takes here that he had that I think kind of uh, lay it out in a more clarified way, but we also had this development that came out from the Daily Beast, uh, so he said he got into basically like a fight with uh, P. Diddy, Puff Daddy, another rapper, um, online after uh, P. Diddy basically came out and said that he was not uh, rocking with the uh, White Lives Matter shirt that Kanye West was wearing at the Paris Fashion Show, so they get into a big fight. Uh, he's publishing a lot of the uh, text threads on his Instagram account and inevitably he ends up saying that Jewish people are controlling P. Diddy. Okay, so again, I mean, kind of like this uh, conspiracy, uh, a trope that like Jewish people, these uh, big financial elites that control all of Hollywood, they are, uh, you know, working the puppet strings behind the scenes and controlling people like P. Diddy to go after Kanye West because he's just like this free thinker or something like that, right? A lot of this, understand, you have to keep this in context that this guy is not mentally stable. So a lot of this doesn't really make any sense. So, you know, to some extent, you can't really give like a well thought out critique of the actual details of what he's saying, because a lot of this shit is just honestly kind of crazy right so this was another development that happened and then he obviously as they pointed out here got restricted on Instagram after this whole event so then um, he also goes over uh, or sorry I'm gonna touch on these other things here uh, just in a second but then he goes over on Twitter and he posts this tweet okay so we're gonna get to Candace Owens response to this tweet here in a second where she was just outright defending it but he says I'm a bit sleepy tonight but when I wake up I'm going Death Con 3 on Jewish people 
in all caps, DEFCON 3. I think he meant DEFCON 3, like the military term, but whatever. Going DEFCON 3 on Jewish people, in all caps. He says, the funny thing is that I can't actually be anti-Semitic because black people are actually Jew. Also, you guys have toyed with me and tried to blackwall anyone whoever opposes your agenda. Okay, so again, I mean, pretty much the most like transparently anti-Semitic tweet you could possibly ask for, right? I mean, I was looking at this and I was like, there's no way that anybody is going to try to actually defend this. Well, we get into Candace Owens now, so let's go ahead and watch this clip here. She is really uh, making some stretches of arguments here. And uh, honestly, it was kind of lazy the way that she went about doing this, but let's just jump into it. That was the tweet. And people subsequently demanded that the tweet be taken down for anti-Semitism. Now, if you are an honest person, you did not think this tweet was anti-Semitic. You did not think that he wrote this tweet because he hates or wants to genocide Jewish people. This does not represent the beginning of the Holocaust. That's if you're an honest person, you'll meet that. You, you will admit that. Okay, but uh, that's not what anybody was saying. <laughs> right? Nobody was saying that, hey, Kanye West is the new Hitler. He's about to go do a genocide single-handedly against the Jewish people in this country. Nobody was saying that. They were just saying the tweet is anti-Semitic. But in order for Candace Owens to make this ridiculous stretch of an argument that it's not anti-Semitic, she has to say that, oh, well, people were just reacting in a way that implied that Kanye was about to do a genocide or that he's about to go out and do a mass murder of Jewish people. No, nobody was saying that. They were just saying the tweet that he put out was anti-Semitic, along with all of those other things that we just led up to this clip but no apparently according to candace owens any honest person could not possibly interpret that in an anti-semitic way but she continues right if you're an honest person when you read this tweet you had no idea what the hell he was talking about i had i had no idea when i read this tweet what the hell he was talking about this tweet inspired questions not answers first and foremost what is death con three did he mean death con three which would be a military defense position, not an offense for those of you that are offended, a military defense position. Is he tweeting this because he's reading the Newsweek headline, calling him an anti-Semitic? Is he angry because he can't believe that he's not free to talk about people in his life who happen to be Jewish? Okay, but... He wasn't using that nuance, Candace, okay? I mean, come on here. I mean, listen, I love the way that she brings up the DEFCON 3 argument and puts a very specific and intentional emphasis on the defensive nature of DEFCON 3 as a military term, right? And so what she's trying to do here is kind of imply that like, oh, he's not going on the offense and attacking Jewish people or saying anything anti-Semitic. He's just being on the defense against all of, I guess, the Jewish people in his personal life that have, uh, you know, fucked with him or pissed him off in some way. I mean, it's such a ridiculous stretch of an argument, but also I think it's important to point out that if you go back and look at some of the rhetoric that even people like Adolf Hitler himself were using before the Holocaust, right? And again, I'm not implying that Kanye is about to go do the Holocaust, all right? That's a completely ridiculous straw man that she was bringing up. But if you go look at the language that Hitler and the Nazis were using to justify doing the Holocaust, they were using defensive language as well. That was the whole point. They were saying Jewish people and all of these other factions that they ended up massacring as well, the gay communities, uh, trans people, etc., all of those things, the mentally ill, they were saying our nation is under attack by these groups of people. Therefore, we are justified in using whatever measures against him in order to eradicate them from our population. They were also framing this as a defensive posture. So I think she maybe needs to read up a little bit on our history there and um, how a lot of the language that she's using right now to say that this is actually a defensive position against the Jewish people in this country that, uh, you know, maybe you should start to uh, look a little bit deeper in terms of uh, some of the language that Nazis and white supremacists have been using throughout the entirety of uh, modern history. And throughout, even uh, if you want to talk about like the black population here in the United States, it's always white nationalists that have been using the language that you know, our over-policing of black communities or, uh, you know, any measures that we want to take in terms of like mass incarceration and throwing people in jail for petty offenses. They always portray that from a defensive posture. They say, oh, we're under attack by these people, right? They are the offensive actors. We're just being, you know, uh, we're reacting in self-defense to these things. I mean, this is not the first time we've heard this type of language and, you know, maybe she should go uh, read a little bit back into uh, some of that history there, but she continues here. Right without being accused of anti-Semitism? Is he saying, I'm not going to shut up and I'm going to keep tweeting and I'm going to keep calling these people out, referring to his friends that he feels slighted by? Is he talking about Jared Kushner and Josh Kushner? 
if you're yeah we don't know because he just said jewish people right he didn't say i'm going death con 3 on jared kushner or like the trump family or something like that he said i'm going death con 3 on jewish people okay and then used a trope below that to imply that like you know uh, jewish people are, are controlling the uh you know uh, the, the population of the united states controlling what people think and what people are able to say i mean he was using those tropes right he was saying broadly the jewish people he didn't make these these nuances that candace owens is trying to grant him right now you're a liar you'll say i know i was scared candace i actually thought that kanye west was going to launch a military strike in israel because that's the reaction like when i woke up and i looked at the headlines the reaction was like kanye west had gotten together a military strike and it was going to go forward in the morning time in israel that was that was the reaction that was met with this tweet no it wasn't i mean again just a straight up lie people were just saying the tweet was anti-semitic Point blank period. It's not that difficult. Now, once again, I want to make this very clear. This is not a defense of his tweet. This oh, it absolutely is a defense of the tweet. What else is this? What else is this? You're saying no honest person could have possibly thought that this was anti-Semitic. That is a defense of the tweet. What are you talking about? Of course, that's what you're doing here. But she's going to try to pull this argument here of like, oh, I'm just asking questions, right? I'm just exercising my free speech rights to, uh, you know, ask some valuable questions as a part of this conversation because nobody's brave enough to do that. It's like, no, you're running defense for him. That's exactly what the fuck you're doing here. This is an open question, which never seems to happen anymore. It's like, you cannot even say the word Jewish without people getting upset in the same way that you're not allowed to say black anymore. In the same way that if you talk about the struggles of black Americans and you talk about the people in black America, like Patrice Cullors, the founder of Black Lives Matter, who are harnessing emotions to enrich their pockets, right? Okay, so according to Candace Owens, apparently you can't even say the word uh, Jewish anymore without being called an anti-Semite. Uh, no, I mean, just completely fucking ridiculous. And listen, this is coming from a leftist, okay? Somebody who very frequently speaks out on behalf of Palestinian human rights and the widespread um, abuses that they face from the government of Israel, right? Again, people call leftists all the time, people like Rashida Tlaib and Ilhan Omar, anybody who dares to speak out for Palestinian human rights or against Israeli apartheid, we are always called anti-Semitic for making those arguments that are not anti-Semitic in any way, shape, or form. They're arguments against a government, the government of Israel. They are arguments against uh, systems of apartheid and systems of ethnic cleansing and uh, war crimes that are being committed on a regular basis. The assassination of Shireen Abu Akleh, the journalist uh, who is a Palestinian American. Those are the types of things that leftists get called anti-Semitic for. But when somebody who identifies as a right winger, as a Trump supporter like Kanye West, when he comes out and says, I'm about to go death con three on Jewish people, apparently that's not anti-Semitic. So, I mean, again, completely ridiculous. Now, Candace Owens is somebody who uh, obviously works for Ben Shapiro's outlet, The Daily Wire, and um, apparently even they were not having this response from her. So they say, quote, she's wrong. Daily Wire chief speaks out on Candace Owens defending Kanye's anti-Semitic comments. So apparently even The Daily Wire uh, wasn't really having this, and they were like, okay, this is a massive stretch of an argument here. What he said was definitely anti-Semitic. So you had that response, which was pretty interesting. You also had this response from uh, none other than uh, Ben Shabibo himself. Uh, he says, back from the Jewish holiday now, now, as usual, two things can be true at once. Kanye's moves towards pro-life, pro-life, faith and family conservatism are encouraging, and also his Death Con 3 posts and Black Hebrew Israelite language are clearly anti-Semitic and disturbing. So, I mean, I guess at least he's willing to come out and say that it was anti-Semitic, but even in doing that, he has to come up with like this weird, bizarre, out-of-nowhere dichotomy where he's saying, you know, yeah, it was bra brazenly anti-Semitic and, uh, you know, that was a pretty insane rant that he just went on, but also he's slightly shifting to the right wing directions on some of these other vague, uh, vague things that we agree with and our values like family conservatism and pro-life positions and stuff like that. So I guess at this point, it's basically just a wash, right? You know, okay, he's brazenly anti-Semitic, but he has some other good tangential opinions that I agree with. So, you know, I mean, let's just uh, walk away from this, right? So, I mean, again, pretty bizarre uh, uh, reaction here coming from somebody who, you know, very similar to other right wingers, very frequently says that it is inherently anti-semitic to defend palestinian rights that it is inherently anti-semitic to criticize the government of israel and their various actions that they take on a regular basis i mean it's just complete hypocrisy right but 
Obviously, that's nothing uh, that we wouldn't expect from somebody like Ben Shapiro or Candace Owens for that matter, but we also, after all this took place, had some other updates to uh, kind of back up the fact that Kanye has been, uh, you know, seriously losing his mind. And again, I'm not saying that just to like diss him because obviously he is struggling with mental health issues right now, but uh, he definitely is not in a good state of mind right now and um, has been uh, leaning into other anti-Semitic talking points in uh, different platforms as well, other than the ones that we've just covered. But uh, here from uh, the New York Post, they say that LeBron James show will not air Kanye West interview over hate speech. Okay, so this is a show that like LeBron James uh, runs, I think it's called The Shop, and uh, basically they're like sitting in like a barbershop sort of context and a bunch of chairs around a, you know, half circle or whatever, and they're having conversations, shooting the shit with a bunch of people, and apparently they brought on Kanye West because they thought, okay, maybe this will be a good opportunity for him to clarify some of the things he said, you know, clarify why he wore the White Lives Matter shirt, and, um, you know, tr start to try to uh, rehabilitate himself or, uh, you know, a, a move away from a lot of these anti-Semitic talking points that he was using over the last couple of days, but no, apparently they couldn't even air this episode of the show because of how ridiculous his hate speech was within this interview. So we had that that came out. We also had this as sort of another corroborating factor here. This is actually, uh, they're, they're talking about something that happened a couple of years ago, but um, apparently this is not the first time that he has been uh, on this sort of train of thought. It's to hear from Forbes. Kanye's troubles deepen. Ex-TMZ staffer says that the star praised Hitler podcast kills interview. So, I mean, again, this is who we're talking about right now. And, you know, I want to stress again that, you know, Kanye is somebody who has like all of the resources that could possibly be offered to uh, anybody on the planet in terms of getting actual help, right? Getting psychiatric help, getting some sort of mental health uh, help. He has so many people who have been uh, overly generous to him in terms of supporting him and standing by him as he's been going through a lot of this shit. He definitely has the resources to be able to do that. He just needs to go fucking do it. And um, another point that needs to be made here with all of his other, you know, mental health issues that he's been going with, I think he has like bipolar polar disorder, you know, obviously you feel sympathy uh, sympathy for him to some extent with what he's dealing with on that front and being mentally unstable and not in a good place, but being mentally unstable or having bipolar disorder does not inherently lead to you being openly anti-Semitic. So, uh, you know, on another front, while you do somewhat feel bad for what he's going through in a mental way, um, on the other front, it's like, you know, this is not an excuse, right? Mental health disorders are not an excuse to feed into white supremacist talking points or to, uh, you know, go out and wear and advertise a White Lives Matter shirt or to be buddy-buddy with Tucker Carlson and Candace Owens, two people who very frequently um, expose or uh, expel um, right-wing reactionary white supremacist, white nationalist talking points. I mean, none of that is an excuse for any of the actual details of what he has been saying over the last number of days. So, I mean, there you go. There's your sort of like little walkthrough in terms of like what has happened over the last couple of days. Hopefully Kanye actually does get uh, some of this mental health um, help that he actually obviously needs. Um, but at the same time, you know, you look at people like Ben Shapiro, you look at people like Candace Owens, you look at people like uh, Tucker Carlson, who never hesitate to criticize left-wing people for standing up for Palestinian human rights and uh, imply that we are somehow actually the anti-Semites in this equation, while also doing propaganda segments and also going and being buddy-buddy with and uh, standing by and defending somebody who is just openly espousing the most ridiculous anti-Semitic talking points that you could possibly come up with. Everyone is saying good politic guy has the best politic. Believe me, no one does it like him. Believe me. Everyone, Everyone is saying, is saying